to my YouTube channel. So today guys, we're going to be going through week four, day two of the seamless study guide that we have been going through, um, through a series of videos that we have been going through and we've actually reached now week four, day two, as I've mentioned. Um, and as I've also mentioned in past videos, please, please, please go and watch all the previous videos because this is a series that we are going through and it will actually make more sense by starting from the beginning than if you just started now um it might not resonate with you or make too much sense but anyway guys i'm not going to rant on and on and on let's just get right into today's um reading and yeah okay so today is about king david so angie says if we're making a short list of people you need to know from the bible here are the ones that we've covered so far and she's got a list here so i'll add it on the screen she says put a check mark next to the ones you feel comfortable describing in a sentence or two and maybe list a fun fact so you've got Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph and Moses. Okay, so what can we say about Adam and Eve? Well, they were the first man and woman that God created. They were the first humans to be on the earth. Um, and they were also the first to sin and fall. Okay, so then we've got Noah. Well, he was the one who God called to build the ark. Um, then we've got Abraham. He was the one who... God had asked to sacrifice his son to test his faith, but obviously didn't let him go through with it, and then blessed him because of his faith, um, and blessed all of his descendants. Then we've got Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Then we've got Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac, I believe, and he was the one who was also quite crafty and nasty, um, and tried to sell his brother's birthright, I believe. Then we've got Joseph. Joseph is the one um, who had... Joseph is a Jacob's son um, and had the coat of many colours. Um, had that dream. Um, if you guys remember, he had the big dream about his brothers bowing down to him or something like that. Um, and then um, he got sold into Egypt and anyway, became great in Egypt, basically. Um, and then we've got Moses. Moses is the one who God had called, um, you know, to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. So, we've got a good understanding of these important people that we've learned about in the Bible so far. So Angie says, as a side note, the example above is certainly not intended to dismiss the role and importance of women in scripture. I think as we get into the New Testament, you'll understand why I chose to do things this way. But I certainly don't want you to think I'm ignoring the ladies. I hope you checked all of those folks off. And if you didn't, you might want to glance over your notes before moving on. And if, I'm feeling, and if you're feeling good about them, let's move on to King David. Yes, he was just a shepherd's boy to most people and a wonderful harpist to others. But the truth of the matter is that he was handpicked by God to play a pivotal role in the narrative of scripture. God obviously loves the underdog and we've already seen a bunch of examples that illustrate this point. David's dad might have looked past him, but his father never did. The people love David, and after Saul dies, they make him king. Wow. At this point, Judah is on board. David is from the tribe of Judah, remember? But the northern tribes don't go for it for seven and a half years. They pick one of Saul's sons to be their king, but eventually everyone becomes one big happy family or at least one continuous, continuous nation. Though we refer to the rules of Saul, David, and his son Solomon as the United Kingdom period, David was really the one to unite the tribes into a single nation. He captured Jerusalem and made it to the capital. And then he uttered the words with the most humble spirit. See now, I dwell in a house made of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And this is found in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 2. So, Angie asks, what do you think David meant by that? To whom was David speaking? Hmm. For hundreds of years, the Israelites had seen God as living in the tent called the tabernacle. David wants to build something permanent to the house of the Ark of the Covenant, and his friend Nathan prays about it, later confirmed that God desires this structure to be built. In the same vision, God also tells Nathan to convey something else to David. So then Angie asks, what did God promise regarding David and his family? And this is found in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8 to 17. 
So let's go and have a read. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer can be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people, Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. And Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. So wow, God is really like promising David a lot and really promising to pull through for him and bless him and his family. Um, so Angie goes on to say, now read David's response in 2 Samuel um, chapter 7, verse 18. How would you describe his posture before God? Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, Sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? So, David doesn't seem to think he's worthy enough. Like, like who am I, Lord? Like, who am my family? Like, who am I to you to bless me like this? This is amazing. Like, wow, like, he's so in awe of God. Like, he's so confused and doesn't understand. By the way, you guys might be to him or some singing. He's in the bathroom. Um, <laughs> ignore that. Um, so then Angie goes on to say, and this is where we have to draw a line in the lifetime of David. 2 Samuel chapter 1 all the way to chapter 10 are all about his humility, his longing for God's righteousness and his success as a leader. But in chapter 11, we see a shift that marks him forever. You know the story, but go ahead and read 2 Samuel chapter 11 to understand the context and timing of this event. So let's go and have like a quick skim read of it. Um, if it's not too long, we can read through it all, but let's go and have a look. Okay, so chapter 11 is basically about David, David and Bathsheba. And this is a point where he had actually sinned against God, um, abused his throne and the heights that God had actually taken him to. Um, David had an affair with another man's wife, Bathsheba, um, and then he tried to cover his tracks and had the man killed. <sighs> Not a good one, David. Um, but I'll let you guys go and have a read. It is a little bit lengthy. If you don't know the story already, that was just a little breakdown of it. But I definitely like recommend going and have a read. So Angie asked questions like, with whom did David have, have an affair? So that was Bathsheba. What did he try to do and cover his... What did he do to try and cover his tracks? Um, he had the man killed on the... I believe when he went out to war or something. Something like that. But guys, go and have a read. Then Angie asks, how did God respond to David's sin and deception? Well, David displeased the Lord. Um, and it will say that in the last verse of chapter 11, um, God was not happy. Because God's like, I've done all of this from you. And then you've turned around and done that. Why? Like, why? Okay, so Angie says, David's buddy Nathan confronts him in chapter 12. About, you know, all of this sin. And then David repents of his sin. He knows he has made a huge mistake before a holy God. But what does Nathan tell him will happen as a result of his sin? And this is found in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, your son born to you will die. Ouch, I forgot that part. That must have been painful. So then Angie says, forgive me for wondering a bit off topic for a moment, but I can't move on without doing so. Plenty of women reading these words will say something like this in their heads. 
So my baby died or some other tragedy happened because I screwed up. It's my punishment. It's my fault. And that's true. A lot of us would think like that. I know I would. And then Angie says, I'll be honest with you about something that is hard for me to understand. I believe that in this particular incident, David's son died as a result of his sin. The only reason I feel comfortable saying that is because the text is clear and that this was the case. But that doesn't mean the same is true in any other instance. Unless you have been specially called of God to be king of Israel and to write a good portion of the Bible, hear me, or even better, hear God. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our offences. And this is in Psalms 103, chapter 103, verse 10. So then Angie goes on to say, I don't come to this story as a complete stranger. In fact, I have buried a child. Wow. Ouch. So that is the case for me. For you, is it? For the hundreds of people around us we watch go through horrible trials, what are they going through? Did our sin cause this? I believe it would be ragingly irresponsible decision to think so. So find John chapter 9 verse 1 to 3 and read it a few times and let it soak in. Jesus healed a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So verse 3, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Okay, so Angie says, Assuming causation in situations like these is one of the most dangerous things we can do for ourselves and for others. I, sp I speak boldly here because I have been the victim of this kind of thinking. And I was wounded for quite some time. I would lay awake at night when we found out that Orgy wouldn't survive recounting mistakes I had made in my life and camping out on the notion that I was being punished for my sin. What I do know for certain is that God, as he did with Joseph and all of his people, will use the tragedies in my life for his and my ultimate good. And that's not a trite answer. It's where I go to rest when I'm weary of the heartache. This kind of reassurance can only come from prayer and genuine relationship with God you believe is ultimately good. And I want you to know I understand if you struggle with it. I've been there and I bet I'll be back in other moments. But I do believe God is good. And like David, I want to be someone known for the way I love him. Wow, that is just so inspiring. And she says, as we close out today, spend a few minutes journaling what's going on in your mind as you process this story alongside your own. And some questions that she asked that you should really go and sit down and think about and journal as she said. Has there been a time when you felt punished by God? How has that affected your relationship with him? Are you, as you finish journaling, read Psalms 51, which David wrote down during his time of grieving. And may God create you a clean heart today and renew a right spirit within you. Be reminded that he will never cast you from his presence and ask him to restore you the joy of your salvation. Praise his name, love, he is good. And guys, there has been so many times where I have um, thought that God has punished me for my sin, and um, that could have been like something I've been going through, or something that happens, I'm like, God, is this a punishment? Or something delays, and I'm like, God, why is this happening? Is it because of the things that I've done wrong? And God's just like, no, no, it's not a punishment. Um, and I'm sure we've all been there. So guys, use this opportunity to just write down and journal, have some time with God. Um, and I hope that this video um, has really helped you. By the way, we're done now. Um, we've finished with day two, day two. Um, and I hope that you've really understood, you know, God's love for it, despite obviously some of the things that happened, but understand why. Um, understanding that God doesn't punish us like this um, for the sins that we have been through. But like Angie mentioned, that um, with David, he was being called to be the king of Israel, to write a big portion of the Bible. God needs you to follow through with that. Like, <laughs> God ain't playing about. Like, um, but I can understand that sometimes it is hard to understand why God allows certain things or, you know, or rattling your brain. Like, is this, is God punishing me? Is this 
that or is that is god angry with me no he's not angry with you he's not punishing you he loves you so much so 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 much and just remember how much he does love you and everything is for his glory everything that we do so just try and remember that but anyway i'm gonna stop going on and on i hope you guys have enjoyed this video make sure to like make sure to comment and make sure to subscribe but yeah 